Art is too important not to share. Welcome to the Allie and Callie Artcast. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Callie, and we're with Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. What? Callie, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. It's it's a lovely day in Coeur d'Alene. It is. It's a little cold. It is. I don't know what day it is, but it's beautiful, it, isn't it? It is. It's always beautiful here. <laughs> it is, whether it it's gray really, or sunny right. or it, cloudy it would be or really, rainy. <laughs> it'd be really pretty if the sun was actually <laughs> shining. But. Yeah, speaking of sun. I'm going to Virginia. You are. I am. I bet that it'll be sunny there. Well, my son and daughter-in-law and grandson mm-hmm. are going to Washington, D.C. He has a conference, uh-huh. and that's where my family, my family all right. lives in Virginia and so we're taking Hendrix to meet the whole family. Fun. It's gonna be great. Go see Mary. Yep we're gonna see Mary. We're gonna see um, my brother Lance and his wife. We're gonna stay at their house Lance and Tina's house. Nice. And um, speaking of that Mm -hmm. you know the Grammys they it's been a while. I know and I I was rooting for your nephew. Yes. But I I had a feeling he wasn't gonna win so sorry. I know, but but he was nominated. He was nominated for a Grammy. And, yeah, that's for pretty best exciting. Album of the year. Yeah, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Was, I'm very proud of yeah, him. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. We were watching the Grammys, and I was texting him, and he sent me a picture of he and his girlfriend Kate, and they're standing in line getting ready to get their photos taken, and they're right behind Taylor Swift. That's fun. Yeah, it was fun. Anyway, that's fun. Just a little little fun stuff. But that's yeah. fun. Little. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Well, I all I'm doing is I'm rehearsing for Sunday in the Park with George. Mm-hmm. I played George Surratt's mother and uh, an art critic in the Act Two, and mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. That music is hard, yeah. and it's a challenge, and everyone is really good. And uh, and then after that, I'm going to do Steel Magnolias, a little stage reading, and then after that, I'm going to Italy. So really. <laughs> The most excited I am is about Italy. Italy. I just can't wait. I just cannot wait. I, I know. It's, I You're dream about have it. So much fun. I my whole Instagram is all about Italy and Italy, Italy, Italy. Right. Food, food, food. Italy, <laughs> Italy. Drink, drink, drink. Food, right. food, food. Beach, beach, and beach. And walk, walk, walk. And walk, walk, walk. Yeah. Sensible shoes. Sensible right. shoes. Right. Make sure yeah. you take some. So I've shoes. got. I'm excited, but I've. You know, it's a good time of year, and my my grandbaby's so cute. Yes, she. She's is. so cute. So I'm very happy. Things Yay. are good, and life is good. We're very excited to have Gary Edwards back. Gary with us. back. Yay. Yay! So Gary Edwards is a musician, a composer, an actor. What else? Are you an actor? No, I've done acting. Yeah, yeah. That's, sure. yeah. that's a new one on he's, the resume I hadn't heard. Well, I've he's just done, done a little... just about everything in filmmaking except directing. I'm not a very bossy guy. And oh, right. Yeah. He's even been on TikTok. <laughs> oh, TikTok. <laughs> that's a new project I'll tell you about <laughs> later. He's with it. He he's more with, with it than it. we are. I know, but you've had some <laughs> great successes, and which... Uh, which prompted a very exciting adventure. Yes, it was exciting. December. Hopefully it'll turn into a musical or a play of some kind, but I think they've already done it. It's called uh, Airplanes, Planes, <laughs> planes Buses, trains, and Trains, and or something like that. <laughs> planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> yeah. But mine is <laughs> a unique story. If you want to get right into that right now? Let's well, sure. do it. Let's talk about, so you have a okay. new musical, and yeah. it's called... It's called A Stitch in Time. It's a takeoff on The Emperor Wears No Clothes, only mm-hmm. in contemporary times. Mm-hmm. And oh, cool. it's scheduled for uh, production in New York City tentatively in June or July of 2023. That's awesome. Wow, Gary, so that's, yeah. that's so exciting. Is yeah. that the same place where they did right. Mona Lisa? Yeah, it's the uh, theater for the new city in uh, the East Village on uh, 155 First Avenue. First Avenue. Yeah. Oh, Great. Wow. Not That's bad exciting. for an old guy. Not My memory's bad. coming back. To Man, me. <laughs> you are busy. You well, so it was in December that Mona Lisa um, played, and right. that's what you went back for. That 
prompted this exciting adventure. Yeah. Isn't that right? So, well, first well, of all, I had a Christmas cantata that I wrote 30 years ago, and that premiered on December 10th in Charleston, uh, Charlton, North, North Carolina. Charleston, right. North Carolina. Yes. And so, uh, the, actually, they paid my round trip fare back to the East Coast. Oh, nice. So, that was a lucrative experience. Yeah, that's good. That's and good. Uh, I do have a video of that on my website, edwardsmusicsite.com. And so, if any music ministers are interested, it's a f- full-blown uh, high church kind of a uh, religious experience. Oh, Excellent. fun. And then uh, on um, December 22nd, my musical that I composed called uh, Stealing Mona Lisa mm-hmm. premiered at the theater for the new city in uh, New York City and uh, ran for two weeks. And it was so successful that they added another day off-Broadway on 555 North 42nd Street. Wow. That's so yeah. cool. That's very cool. And that is right at the southern border of the Times Square, by the way. That street is right. the southern border of Times Square. So uh, that was thrilling, but I didn't get a chance to go to that. Hopefully, I'll get a video out of it pretty soon, and we'll see oh, it on my right. website. Mm-hmm. But if somebody wants to see a video of uh, either show, like if you're a producer or a theater, mm-hmm. uh, I'll send you the script, and I'll send you a link to a, a rough video of the uh, performance. Oh, great. That I went to. Right. Okay. So, Stealing Mona Lisa was fun. I got to stay in a building that was uh, Airbnb, and it was built in 1860. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I got to find out the experience of what it's like to be a a struggling artist in New York City (laughs) (laughs) when I had to sleep in my clothes because it was so cold in there. Oh, boy. (laughs) But other than that, it wasn't bad sharing a bathroom with 15 or 20 other people, and uh, it was a unique experience, and I only saw one dead rat the whole time I was in New York City. That's pretty good. good. Was it in the subway? Way, I hope. No, it was on the street next oh. to one of those kiosks that they built for COVID so that the uh, patrons could eat outdoors. Oh, oh boy. Wow. So the garbage piles up uh, yeah. once in a while outside. And But it I does. didn't see any live rats. Oh, that's so good. that's the good news. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, the last time day. I was in New York, I saw live rats, but it was oh. in the subway. And I was oh, like, yeah. oh, oh, there's a rat. Oh, okay. Boy. And while wow. I was in New York City, I got to go to uh, Harlem with my friend from Puerto Rico, Rafael. Sanchez, uh-huh. and uh, we went to an open mic at the uh, bar called the Harlem Nights. They have an open mic every Monday night, so I signed up, and I sang Otis Redding's song called Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, Right. and they loved me. I That's was so awesome. surprised. That's yeah. awesome. I was getting all kinds of high fives and, and fist bumps, and they even talked to me about checking in with the Harlem Opera and the Har- uh, Harlem Baptist Church to s- work on some theatrical projects for those guys. Oh, that's wow. cool. Gary, so that's I have been in so touch cool. with the Harlem Opera. That's cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. So this New York City trip was a great success and a very exciting and a lot of fun. So right. tell us a little bit about the play before we go into your journey. Stealing Mona Lisa yes. is about a true, based on a true story that occurred around 1926 when uh, uh, a construction worker actually stole the Mona Lisa painting from the Louvre in Paris. <laughs> he kept it for four years, and uh, he said he did it for the love of country and to return it to Italy where it was created, and uh, so he wanted to see it in the uh, Ruffini, no, what's the name of the Uffizi uh, Museum in Italy, oh, wow. and that's where he wanted it displayed. And so they actually let him off with a uh, just a slight prison term and uh, a small sentence he got off pretty good on that oh wow. wow how did they catch him or did he turn himself in uh how did they catch him he tried to uh turn it in for a reward oh instead of selling it he was trying to get a reward out of it and uh the art, like, de- art dealer it? set him up with a sting operation and the uh oh, wow. french police caught him that way oh wow wow yeah hmm. so the show is all about that true story. Well, we uh, kind of it embellished it a little bit, uh, gave it a little bit of a Hollywood treatment. Uh, in our version, the uh, painting comes to life, and they fall in love. These pa- this painter and his girlfriend gets jealous, and they're singing duets, you know, and <laughs> she's uh, smoldering in the background. <laughs> so, And not everybody can see her, because this is his fantasy in his mind. So right. uh, that's how our version comes out. Oh, cool. But interesting that when I was in the Greyhound bus depot, which is another story, mm-hmm. I met a guy from Italy who was an educated man, and he was a teacher in Italy. And uh, he told me that the true story is that the painting of Mona Lisa was uh, a self-portrait by Michelangelo. 
and that uh, dressed up in drag, I guess you could say. Right. So I've heard that story. That's the first time I'd heard that. Oh, interesting. If I'd known that, we might have (laughs) changed the 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 story story around a little bit. bit. (laughs) That would make a more contemporary version. (laughs) Oh, my. But, uh, yeah, the play was a lot of fun. The cast was like between... Uh, 19 and 24 years old so it was a young dynamic cast very talented Mm -hmm. Uh, we had choreographers that would just knock your socks off the director uh, Jack Legenza he was 22 years old he was Swiss but he spoke English without a trace of an accent and he was very authoritarian like I'm not (laughs) he did a great job oh good and I think he has a great future ahead of him that's great so so your partner wrote the script and you wrote the music right my partner is Claude Solnick and he lives in New York, so that's uh-huh. how I got the New York connection. Actually, he advertised for a composer on one of these websites. Oh, wow. So that's how we got together. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. So so, so the show closes, and you're or getting ready to close, <laughs> yeah. and you're heading home for Christmas. Right. It's Christmas Eve. I'm in New York City. My bed and breakfast uh, just... Uh, finished and so I'm waiting at six o'clock in the morning for a taxi that I'd reserved mm-hmm. uh, actually I'll tell you uh, I had an uber account but I deleted it because uh, they messed me around so much they would kept raising the prices mm-hmm. instead oh. of fifteen dollars they raise it up to a hundred dollars for a trip to Times Square and a time what? yeah so I just said well this is a kind of a scam so I yeah. deleted uh, uber and so I had a taxi that I'd reserved and I got up and waited 15 minutes, and the taxi never showed up. Oh, and boy. so I started w- walking, and you know, I have a bad leg from a car wreck, so right. I'm using a cane. I'm dragging my suitcase behind me, and I oh, boy. walk up 7th Street, and uh, at the corner, luckily, there was a cab. A cab. And I knocked on the window, and I woke up the guy. <laughs> he just happened to be taking a break. And so he said, Yeah, you take me to the airport uh, for 80 bucks. Actually, 70. I gave him uh-huh. a t- tip. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but uh, I had checked on the internet to see if the uh, everything was okay with the airlines. And they said, yeah, it's going on time. It's on mm-hmm. schedule and uh, no problem. So I paid him s- some money to take me to the airport. And I got there and the lady at the counter said, yeah, it's, uh, the, uh, the monitors on the screen said that they were on time and everything was okay. But the lady says, no, that's not true. Oh, They've boy. canceled all the flights because of the weather and be- right. everything. So... This was Christmas Eve in 2022, so if you recall, that was a bad time to be traveling. Mm-hmm. And were you traveling on Southwest? It was supposed to be Alaska Airlines. Oh, okay. And uh, they had said, no, yeah, Southwest had their problems, but everybody was having their problems. Yeah, right. So uh, they said it would be the 29th instead of the 24th before I could leave town. Well, oh, Five days in New York. Well... The problem is, is New York is expensive and That's it's colder than heck. Right. There was no snow, but the chilly uh, wind factor was really down there. Mm-hmm. And so I says, well, I've got to go somewhere else where it's warm at least and wait for a flight. So I uh, called my brother-in-law in Las Vegas and he said, yeah, I could go uh, hang out with them. But then the uh, airplanes weren't going to Las Vegas. I went to the train depot and Amtrak said they don't go to Las Vegas. So I says, okay, I'll go to Texas. Uh, it should be warm there, and I've got relatives there. <laughs> and uh, they said they don't go to Lubbock, Texas. I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> it's boy. A, it's not one of the high, not a high, high points spot. of America. <laughs> so uh, I couldn't go to Lubbock. So uh, I called my friend that I'd written that Wataino CD that mm-hmm. we discussed last time I was on the air. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, yeah, come on down. i got a couch. You can sleep there, and we'll have a good time. So I bought a bus ticket to... Uh, Orlando, Florida, and uh, it's supposed to leave at uh, 11 p.m., and it was like 1 p.m. then, So, and they couldn't check in my bag. Uh, they had no way to check it in, so I had to be with my bag at the bus depot almost all day, For thir- and then the bus <laughs> was an hour late, and uh, <laughs> finally the bus got there at midnight, and uh, in the meantime, I'm walking around Times Square with my suitcase dragging behind me and uh, grabbing a bite to eat here and there and getting a- accosted in the uh, bus depot by uh, some grifters that want to scam me out of some money. And, oh, yeah. And they were uh, making uh, slurs against uh, honkies, as they called it. And I just said, well, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you know, did it. And so I got through the day, but it was a long day. And then... Uh, at 11, uh, no, at 12 p.m., the bus finally got there, and uh, the guy said, well, I need a tag f- 
uh, for my baggage to load it up uh, because it's probably overweight. And so there's a mad scramble. Everybody is, uh, a lot of people were affected by that surprise. <laughs> and I don't know why they couldn't have given me a baggage claim ticket when I was there at 1 p.m. But anyway, so I'm frantically scurrying around the building trying to find the place where the uh, they give out the baggage claims and I couldn't find it. And I offered to pay the other uh, people at the bus 20 bucks to uh, <laughs> help me get a baggage claim and find the place. And they said, 20 bucks, that's chicken feet. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I probably would have had to give them more, but I didn't want to reveal that I, you know, that I had actually a lot, enough money with me to mm, whatever yeah. I had to do to survive. So anyway, so I missed the bus. And uh, I had the choice of sleeping in the bus depot all night. Uh, with my other homeless friends uh -huh. or, uh, <laughs> or going to a hotel. So uh, I said, well, it's midnight and uh, I had to be at the bus depot at 9 o'clock in the morning to weigh my, weigh my baggage. So I uh, walked up to these two cops on Times Square and I says, hey, uh, friends, I says, the, you know where I can get a cheap hotel <laughs> close to here? And they said, sure, go two blocks to 40th Street, turn right, and there's a bunch of hotels there. So I went to 40th Street and turned right. I don't know what direction it was. My direction mm -hmm, was all right. screwed up in New York City. And uh, went to the first hotel. They were full. The second hotel was full. Finally, the fifth hotel uh, was a Marriott Hotel. And uh, they said, yeah, we have a room. And so uh, I rented a room. And uh, for cheapness, yeah, it was 240 bucks. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was, and yeah, right the, and uh, it's basically, yeah. On, on the corner of uh, Times Square. So, yeah, it was, uh, but, you know, what am I going to do? So I rented the room and I got a shower, I got a shave, and uh, that was the last one I had for six days. <laughs> but, uh, so the next morning I got up and weighed my bag, and uh, the bus wasn't leaving till 3.30 p.m. Oh, my God. Uh, so I went back, took a nap, and they let me stay an extra hour or two past the checkout time. Listen. I guess they felt sorry for me. You know? <laughs> so I got on the bus at 3.30, and we went through uh, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Washington, D.C., uh, Philadelphia, you know, went through all these five or six states. <clears throat> Those states are really close together back on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I ended up in Richmond, Virginia, about 11.30 p.m. Uh, we had a 20-minute break in Philadelphia for uh, dinner. And uh, so I says, well, you know, a uh, quick place around here where I can get something to eat in 20 minutes. And they said, yeah, go to this place down the, a block away. And I went there and actually, uh, I said, I'll order a Philly cheesesteak because it's Philadelphia, right? So I Hi. wanted to experience the real thing. <laughs> I said, sorry, we don't have any left. Uh, so I had to get some quick fried, fried chicken, <laughs> but it was delicious and uh, fairly inexpensive. And then I got back uh, to the bus depot in time and ended up in Richmond, Virginia at 11.30 p.m. Well, the bus driver said, just leave your things on the bus. Everything's going to be fine and uh, we'll leave in an hour and don't be late or you'll miss the bus. So um, it was Christmas day at, by that time, pretty close. And uh, so uh, we waited and and then an hour later came and went back to the uh, bus loading area. And they said, well, the driver hasn't showed up. It's Christmas day, he, won't, he hasn't called in. Uh, oh, great. Who knows what's going on, you know, maybe what, just decided where are to you take again? Richmond, yeah. Virginia. Okay, yeah, that's Richmond, wild, Virginia, but... if you've ever been to the uh, bus depot there, it's- I uh, have, actually. <laughs> it's actually uh, part of the Union Pacific or whatever, some railway uh, station. So they have the railway and the bus depot located in the same building. It's huge. Uh, so, here I w was, my stuff is on the bus, it's going to leave, they couldn't tell me when it's going to leave. I ended up staying up all night in the bus depot. People Ugh. are vomiting on the floor, oh people are vandal gosh. They're vandalizing the bathrooms, there's crap in the toilets and there's bought beer bottles and wine bottles. Mm. And then these two drunks come up to me and I thought, uh oh, you know, there's uh, going to be a conflict here and actually they said, hey, I remember you, you lent me a pen at the bus depot in New York City. It says, <laughs> he said, don't worry about a thing. He says, we'll make sure you get on the bus and and everything's going to be cool. So I says, okay, nobody's going to bother you. And uh, so actually, uh, it was 5.30 in the morning, the bus finally showed up. But I will say this, there were people there that uh, were helpful to me all day long, or the whole, the whole three days. There were people there that were 
friendly and there were people there that took care of me because I was, you know, obviously disabled. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I had uh, a lot of friends on the way uh, to the, uh, uh, during the journey. And uh, I made a lot of new friends. Mm, and, that's cool. Uh, so we left. Uh, I might have left out the part of the story where we uh, had a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, I think it's after we left Richmond. We left at 5.30 in the morning. And uh, an hour later, uh, I don't remember where we were, but anyway, the, a tire blew off the uh, bus de- and actually hit the car behind us. Oh, no. So uh, we're sitting there waiting for the tire repair man to come from the Greyhound company. And uh, that took three hours, so I'll make that story short. Oh but anyway, uh, so we missed the next connection. But a- anyway... <laughs> Uh, God. <laughs> anyway, That's and horrible. then this guy in the car had called the cop. Hey, ladies, have you heard about Nia yet? Hi, I'm Marilee Wallace, and I'm a proud board member of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and owner of Nia. That's short for the North Idaho Alliance. We specialize in leadership development, specifically focused in connecting women to programs, workshops, and networking to educate, empower, and enrich their lives. Our goal is to make positive impacts in the community while helping other women in North Idaho succeed. Next up is our annual Onward and Upwards Women's Conference set for May 24th and our new event, Women with Cool Jobs, scheduled for early summer. And then keep a lookout to register for our super popular popular Women of Impact Leadership Roundtable Series. That begins every September. So I hope you'll look us up. We're at thenorthidahoalliance.com. Find us on Facebook or just give us a call, 208-660-1557. Go out and make it an impactful day. So we're at the flat tire, and then where do you go? They fix so, the tire. Uh, well, then I haven't finished the flat tire story. Uh, oh, yeah. The guy that got his car hit on his bumper from the uh. Greyhound bus tire uh, called the cops uh. and because the cop, uh, the driver wouldn't pay him off for the uh, bump oh. on his car. Oh, right. Oh, so the oh. cop comes over, and finally, and he says, well, he says, there's nothing criminal going on here. Just call your insurance company, and they'll settle the matter. Yeah. And so the bus driver knew he was off the hook. And, oh, uh, boy. So finally, after three hours, we got back on the road, and uh, we ended up uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, on the trip to Atlanta, Georgia, I met these guys. Uh, one was from Venezuela. One was from uh, Morede of Michoacan, which I had actually been for two weeks in the 60s uh, when I was a Peace Corps volunteer. I'd spent two weeks in wow. Michoacan. So uh, we they didn't speak English, so we started talking and chatting in Spanish, and mm-hmm. uh and uh, we became friends, and uh, so whenever the bus driver would make an announcement, like you're t- we're taking a 10-minute stop or whatever, I would tell him what he was saying and w- what the instructions were and, and help him uh, make the right uh, choices when it comes to getting meals and uh, getting off, getting back on the bus. So I did make some friends there and uh, uh, quite a few uh, Spanish-speaking people. So and finally, got to practice your Spanish. I got to practice my Spanish. Yeah, that was so <laughs> cool. Well, in New York City, the people there that speak all kinds of languages. So oh, I was yeah. talking to drivers from Dominica and oh, all right. over uh, Latin countries uh, for the whole 10 days I was there. But anyway, getting back to the Greyhound uh, bus trip, we went through uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, ended up in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I accidentally left my bag on the bus. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it no. was like a late, a late at night, around 8 o'clock or so. And uh, so, like I said, we missed our connection, and I went to the ticket window, and uh, she said, well, there's no tickets from here to Orlando for another uh, four or five days. Oh, <laughs> I no. Said, there I am in Atlanta, and I don't know anybody there, and I'm stuck there. I said, oh, no. And she said, oh, wait a minute. I found one ticket. And uh, I had gotten off the bus early. That's why I forgot my bag, because I wanted to make sure I was ready for the next leg of the journey. Right. So I was the first one at the ticket counter. So I got the one ticket that was left for Orlando. Oh, Oh my goodness. And so in a way, I kind of... Lucked out. uh, Lucked out. And my friends that were going to Orlando (laughs) didn't luck out. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, I felt bad about that. But... And uh, I didn't want to spend another night in the bus depot, but it wasn't leaving till the next morning, so uh, at 5.30 a.m. So I called up one of these uh, travel companies and booked a hotel, and it was a Clarion Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia, just so you'll remember which one not to use if you ever go there. (laughs) 
uh, and I couldn't get a bus comp- a taxi company to answer my phone calls. I called uh, five of them and nobody answered, and I didn't uh, have my Uber thing app anymore. anymore. Yeah. But I went around the corner and found a taxi, and I did find my bag. It was in a locked up area. Somebody had taken it off the bus and stored it, so I got that oh, back. Oh, good. And so uh, I got to the uh, hotel about 12:30 in the morning. Uh, the receptionist was really nasty. <laughs> oh I don't God. know why. She may be tired, maybe grouchy. I was tired and grouchy. And I couldn't find my uh, hearing aids and my glasses, so I couldn't see what she wanted me to sign. <laughs> and I couldn't hear what she was asking me to do. So uh, we weren't getting along too well. Oh, and then no. uh, finally, after I signed the papers to... Uh, to check in <laughs> she told me oh by the way I, she says the pipes broke and we don't have any water here oh <laughs> my <laughs> so here i so am i really want to stay there wanting to stay there i only have five hours to stay there oh, and uh, oh. i couldn't get a shower i couldn't use the bathroom <laughs> oh jeez i cheated <laughs> Yeah. Like, what are they going to do? What am I going to do? Exactly. So uh, I stayed there and I uh, got up at 4.30 and and then I tried to call the taxi companies again to get a ride to the bus people and nobody answered the phone. I don't know what's going on with taxi service in this country. (laughs) Wow. But uh, so finally I bribed the uh, security guard. I said, hey, if I pay you, would you take me to the bus people? And he said, yeah. (laughs) So he kind of went AWOL from his station at the hotel and uh, actually took me my bag and I got to the bus depot in time. Well, that's all good. And uh, I hope he didn't get fired because he was a nice guy. But <laughs> <laughs> so then we, I sat next to this really interesting guy. He was uh, disabled and hadn't had anything to eat, he said, for three days. Ugh. But he uh, was very intelligent. And uh, so we had an amazing conversation about philosophy and about Nietzsche and about yeah. <laughs> the meaning of life or whatever. And and then uh, I finally made it to Orlando about 9.30 at night and uh, I gave the guy 20 bucks because uh, whether he was, anyway, uh, so he could get something to so eat. So he could get something yeah. to eat, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was an interesting experience. and. Uh, so, so it was day, a bus trip from hell. Yeah. I, yeah so it sounds day, like it. How long did it take you to get? It took me three days to get three there. Three days. It was supposed to take 30 hours. Yeah. Oh, boy. And it took me three days to get there. But oh, once I got God. to Orlando, everything was fine. My right? friend was there and uh, That's good. I slept on his couch and we went out sightseeing the sights of Orlando uh-huh. and uh, went to Disney Springs and went to his, uh, all the local uh interesting spots for tourists mm-hmm. and I had a great time with my friend and they actually asked me to go to Cuba with him to make a recording session and I said well what would I be doing and he says just hanging out yeah. <laughs> just go there and listen to music and I said oh I'm sure my wife will like that idea <laughs> <laughs> I could take another $3,000 vacation <laughs> to Cuba while she sits at home alone right. <laughs> she's yeah. here in uh we were supposed to go to Wenatchee for Christmas. Uh, I was oh. supposed to meet him there. Yeah. And oh, because of the weather, they canceled the family get-together in Wenatchee. So my so w- poor was... wife is sitting at home all alone oh. f- all Christmas season. Oh, boy. Oh, bummer. So uh, I decided not to go to Cuba in February. <laughs> now, Mark, I, I might go there yet. I don't know. <laughs> it's, I don't know. Have I know you ever been April. to Cuba? No. Hey, it sounds kind of cool, though. I did get oh, my passport. Yeah. I'd yeah. take it. I'd take that opportunity in a heartbeat. I think it's just... Well, they said they had... Uh, they lined me up, and I talked on uh, Zoom with this, or whatever it's called, with this uh, Cuban gal that's supposed to be the most famous singer in Cuba. Mm. And she said she liked my music and that was well, going to yeah, learn your some music, of my songs, yeah, uh, especially music, my Latin song. Yeah. yeah, it's right up their alley. Yeah. That's what I would think. Yeah, sure. Really so cool. we'll see if that pans out, but because uh, I'm in a different time zone than you're at when, during this broadcast. <laughs> but anyway, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Wow. <laughs> that's quite a, an adventure. That is yeah. an adventure. That so when like did a- you finally get home? It was uh, three days later. Oh, home? Well, I, home to Idaho. I was in Orlando for three days, so that's three six days. days from Christmas Eve. So mm-hmm. that's like the 30th of wow. December, the day before New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. And needless to say, we didn't do much on New Year's Eve because I was pretty tuckered out. Yeah, then. I bet. Wow. Needed, yeah. Well, you probably had showers at your friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did have uh, some new projects that I'd like to tell you about. Yeah, I, I was going to ask. Your okay. new projects. What's, yeah. So what's next? What well, do you got going uh, on? Well, just two days ago, I met up with my friend Adam Foote 
and Adam plays the tin uh, pan the, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. on the streets. The and, tin pan drum or mm -hmm. pan, and, pan drum. Uh, he asked me to help him extract some audio from some of his soundtracks on his videos. And in exchange, he was going to help set me up on TikTok. Oh, so let's <laughs> see, a TikTok yeah. star right here, yeah. Gary so Edwards. We, we got to get with it, you know. We got to keep up with the younger generation. <laughs> That's right. Well, I saw his phone; it had 3.6 million followers. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "Well, this is the guy for me because yeah, he's, I wanted to get on TikTok, but I didn't know how." He's right. So we actually did uh, some TikTok videos and set up an account. It's called Your Grandpa Gary. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking for you right Your now. Your Grandpa oh, Gary. Gonna, oh, wait. wait. Wait, I got to turn down my sound, but go ahead. Tell us more. Yes. Uh, so we filmed six 15-second TikTok oh. videos. <laughs> We're trying to find it. I love it. You like grandpa. like in one, he's singing happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, just making up a melody. And because I'm going to be 82 in a couple mm -hmm. of days. Oh, and happy also, birthday. By the way, thank you. And it's also our 47th anniversary in a couple of days. Oh, wow. wow. That's a big so one. So you're 25 years. You're just yep. beginning. You're still on your honeymoon. I know. Right? Exactly. We're I know. Honeymoon. And your wife is still married to you after the... After <laughs> I don't know how she <laughs> puts up with me. I married a saint. I'll tell you that. Your grandpa what? Say it one more time. Your grandpa Gary. Your grand grandpa Gary. So there's one video there where it shows this cute young teenage girl showing us how to fix her hair. Yeah. She's curling her hair. So they have this thing called uh, stitch where you stitch onto somebody else's video. Yeah. And so he filmed me uh, brushing my hands through my bald head <laughs> <laughs> and as if I was doing this, teaching them how to arrange my hair. Right. Said, oh, yeah. This is really easy. It only takes 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we filmed six uh, TikTok videos and we're going to do a lot more. I love it. Good yeah. for you, Gary. Cool. How fun. And Some then my other new project, since uh, you mentioned it. <laughs> I love it. Actually, I brought it up. No, it's called A Stitch in Time. I already told you about that. Yeah. But we want to hear yeah, more tell about us it. What, tell exactly us what it is. Yeah. Well, uh, about five or six years ago, uh, I saw this ad that uh, Claude was looking for a composer. So I answered the ad, and we wrote a musical together, and then we wrote three musicals and many other songs together, Christmas songs or whatever, and then nothing was happening, So uh, and COVID hit, so nothing was happening, and uh, mm -hmm. none of our shows got produced, and he wanted to write more shows, and I was interested in someone, but I says, you know, until we get something produced, it's like working for nothing. Right. So I was kind of a jerk about it. And uh, so <laughs> we lost touch for two years. And then he <laughs> called me up in September of 2022. Uh, just when I was in Las Vegas on vacation and says, uh, by the way, he says, uh, uh, we're getting this uh, musical stealing Mona Lisa produced in uh, December. And so I got all excited again. Right. And because there's some motivation here. Yeah. And so we did Stealing Mona Lisa. And now he wants to do a Stitch in Time. And we've got this other a musical that we wrote together called uh, Long Island Lolita. That's uh, it's all done. All we have to do is just update it and rearrange some uh, band parts and it's ready to go. Wow. And then uh, <clears throat> and this guy, he's a fantastic writer. He writes for a living. Uh, he's a independent journalist, freelance journalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's fun working with him and he gets the job done. That's wow. great. And he's got a great imagination with all kinds of quirky things that come up. And so, Claude, uh, if you're out there listening, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So what is Stitch in Time about, though? Well, it's about... Uh, Secret? The Emperor's New Clothes. Oh, you told the me already. The Emperor's New Clothes. and See? The, I and, and it kind of follows that story loosely, That's but it takes place in contemporary times. Okay. So, but any resemblance between any person living or dead it's is purely <laughs> coincidental <laughs> and just meant to protect the guilty. <laughs> hmm. No women were harmed in the making of this show. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Funny. Oh, that's fun. Oh, well, that's you exciting. Have done, you have done some really fun uh, yeah. things. Now, the other thing is, uh, I did uh, send the Stealing Mona Lisa script to uh, Trigger and a link oh, to yeah. the video. So oh, you hopefully did. she'll get a chance yeah. to review it and I could get some local success. That yeah. would be cool. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> that would be really fun. Actually, yeah. a few people have recognized me from the newspaper articles. So. Have they? Oh, yeah. I oh, have people come cool. up to me on the street and say, hey, you're the guy that wrote that 
musical in New York City. And I said, yeah. See, that's cool. awesome. That's so great. better late than never, right? Right. Yeah. I'm eighty, going to be 82. Well, I'm 82 by the time you hear this. Yeah, so. Right? so there you go. Yep, oh, and by the way, I have other good news. You remember I talked to you about my opera? Yes. Well, when I was in New York City, I met with a guy named Eric Einhorn, who does a project, a non-profit called... Uh, Opera in the city or something like that, the, the new opera or something. Uh-huh. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Eric. Uh, <laughs> so he said uh, my opera was just what he was looking for. Oh. And he plans to produce it in the next year or two. And it's where they take operas and they put them in the environment, like at museums or in city parks or oh, th- cool. places like that. Oh, cool. I said that would be wonderful. Right. Yeah. So that would be this one? Yeah. This the Qualchan. Qual-chan. But you, didn't you rename that? Yeah, Qualchan and Wistox. Right. Thank you. I added the female element because yep. the female yeah. uh, lead plays such an important part, mm-hmm. if not more important part. And she's the narrative and also the uh, love interest. Right. Right. Because was it, what was it called before? Qualchan. It was just, so, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Hey, y'all. It's Jason from Tubbs Coffee Roasters. We are North Idaho's specialty coffee roaster. We are homegrown and we are local. We love coffee and we love our community, especially Allie and Callie in ArtCast. We have a retail space in our roastery in Hayden, and we can also be found on the shelves at Super One and Yolks. And if you like to buy coffee online, we do offer subscriptions. You can find us at TubbsCoffeeRoasters.com. Support arts and culture and your local roaster. That's all. You're a really busy guy. You always have something on the back burner. Anything you haven't told us about? Yeah. No, just that I have ambitions to get a Latin Grammy for my last two CDs. You oh, should. there you go. And one's Wouldn't called Wataino and the other one's called uh, right. I Amor, have v- Life, and Chupacabra songs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've got oh. both of those. Yeah, and the thing I wanted to know is if somebody out there could give me information about NFTs because I commissioned some artwork for the cover of my CDs, my Latin CDs, uh-huh. two arts. Uh, one was by, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Valenzuela, the mm-hmm. uh, art instructor from Eastern Washington University. Oh, uh-huh. And uh, he painted uh, a painting, which was a contemporary painting of a chupacabra. And a chupacabra is a goat sucker, and the, uh, the right. legend is that they come down and soak the blood out of goats at night <laughs> right. in Latin American countries. Mm-hmm. But in my version, uh, he's coming down and making love to goats. <laughs> 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 I wanted to keep it on a positive note. <laughs> and oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, oh, heel, heel Valenzuela, I think. Oh, I'm having a brain. That's all right. Anyway, yeah. uh, freeze. It'll, it'll <laughs> I was come, gonna, it'll I was come to you in the middle of the night. And, and then uh, the, the other artwork <laughs> is the other artwork is by Wade Lutz, which is an anime style, so it's more like a cartoon of oh, right. the same topic, the mm. Chupacabra. So tell us what an NFT is. A non-fungible, tangible. And an NFT is where people sell works of art. Sometimes they might only sell one copy, and so the person that buys it owns it right and oh, okay. they're selling for like 90 or a hundred thousand dollars and they're collectibles and oh, so right. uh, uh, with my uh, project I want to sell these works of art uh, whether uh, and make a deal whether I sell a bunch of them for two hundred dollars a limited number or whether I sell one for a lot of money right okay because frankly, uh, to write music, you have to be rich. <laughs> it doesn't pay much. In fact, right. I calculated over the years I spent a lot more money on my music uh, writing projects and careers than I have earned. So right. Yeah. Anybody out there want to feel pity for a poor starving <laughs> artist? Go go to Gary's website. That's right. Oh, it's on my website. Gary yeah. Edwards. It's Edwards Music Edwards Site. Edwards Music Site. Dot com. S-I-T-E. Edwards Music S-I-T-E dot com. Yeah. Right. And by the way, on my website, I have eight videos <coughs> about songwriting, and they're free. So if you're an aspiring songwriter, uh, limited time only, you can sign for uh, sign up for all eight classes for nothing. Oh, oh. cool. And, and That's nice. And it's called Songwriting, and then there's chapters on marketing which is a 50 percent of the work and then and, uh, creating melodies creating lyrics uh, music theory basics um, mm-hmm. uh, collaborating with other people uh, contracts how to avoid getting into 
of trouble because <laughs> I've had so many song sharks out there and they sign me up for a music publishing contract, don't do anything, and then they expect to get Paid. some money if you happen yeah. to market the, the yeah. songs. Right. So yeah. uh, I can tell you all the tricks of what not to do. Good. <laughs> the art and business. The business right. and art. Right. It's hard. Yeah. It is hard. People it's should not... be compensated for their work. If they people, really should. Absolutely, if they people should. people can go buy a hamburger for eight or ten bucks uh, that lasts for one day, then they should be able to buy a work of art that lasts for a lifetime. Right. Boy, is that And the, a creator needs to be compensated for his right. work or her work. That's well put, Gary. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah come on, people. <laughs> well, Gary, it is always so fun to talk to you. Yeah, just, you just have so much going on, and your adventure from New York to Orlando was classic. Yeah. 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 yeah I can <laughs> laugh about it now. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> At the time, I'm sure it wasn't very funny. No, but, I'm sure not. Uh, it's nice that you can find the positive in it, and that yeah. there are good people out there that will help you. Yeah, and, yeah. sure. And because, it reminds me of what it was like to be a uh, hungry. And uh, yeah. and a working poor person. Yeah, <laughs> because I met plenty of them, and it, and it relived my uh, early childhood years. Right. Yeah. When I was growing up, uh, the first four years of school, we lived in a 300 square foot shack, and there was four of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know what it's like to be without, and I can empathize with those people. Yeah. Right. So uh, yeah. Yep. It's, well, that's good. That is good. So it, we really appreciate having you. Yeah, we do. Back and Anytime. You, you always do so much and. And gosh, if we just did half as much as Gary. I'd be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, woo, that's so much. But we look forward to hearing more about your shows and all your music. And mm-hmm. make sure you check out Gary's website. Mm-hmm. Thanks again, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thank Once again. It was a pleasure. Yep. Always fun. Always fun. Plus theater. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Allie. And I'm Callie. And whatever you do today, make sure it's creative. The Alley and Kelly Artcast is a program of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and is sponsored by NIA, North Idaho Alliance, a woman-based leadership organization designed to inspire, uplift, and impact your community and lives. And Tubbs Coffee Roasters, globally sourced, locally roasted coffee.